Hello everyone, welcome to today's devotional. Our thought today is going to come from an article that was posted about a week ago. Uh, the title of it is, Whoopi, Go uh, Whoopi suggests, Whoopi Goldberg suggests God supports abortion, clashes with pro-life Hasselbeck, he gave us freedom of choice. Now we're gonna, not going to look at the entire article because some of it has uh, a little bit more to do with uh, politics and so forth, but, but there's a couple things I want to bring out. During Wednesday's episode of The View, co-host Whoopi Goldberg debated with pro-life guest and former View co-host Elizabeth Hasselbeck on what it means to be pro-life. During the segment, Goldberg made arguments suggesting that God is fine with abortion. Make that a little bit bigger here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Goldberg made arguments suggesting God is fine with abortion. The host and famous actress seemed to invoke God to justify women choosing abortion, countering Hasselbeck's pro-life points by saying that God gave women freedom of choice. Goldberg also argued that Jesus Christ's teaching of do unto others as you would have them do unto you obliged her to not speak out against abortion lest she risk judging others. Uh, and there's some kind of background and stuff here and... Uh, talks about Hasselbeck and what kind of the things she said. That's where Goldberg first countered, insisting that women, including those that abort, are merely exercising their God-given freedom of choice, even in committing abortion. As you know, God doesn't make mistakes, Goldberg insisted. God made us smart enough to know when it wasn't going to work for us. That's the beauty of giving us freedom of choice. She added, apparently implying that abortion, like adoption, is a choice that God allows women to discern for themselves. Uh, she goes on, uh, Goldberg goes on to say, listen, I have no doubt, uh, but I also know that God made me smart enough to know that there are alternatives out there that can work for me. I will investigate them, but I also know God said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I will not make that decision for anybody, she declared. Hasselbeck responded asking, what about the life in the womb? She added, I will say this, that life has a plan and a purpose designed by God. I don't believe that there's any circumstance. And then Whoopi uh, kind of uh, jumps in, dismissing her argument. Goldberg responded, I love that you feel that way. Clearly indicating she didn't agree that the life in the womb must be protected from abortion. And so the article just continues discussing a little bit of the the uh, political aspects and, and the fact that uh, many Christian churches teach that it's morally wrong. Uh, the Catholic Church teaches that at any point after conception, abortion is wrong, which I agree with. I, I believe that too. Uh, so there's two components here that I want to kind of break down. One is, which is to me the, the second part of this, is her referencing the golden rule, what's considered the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and she references that and links it with not judging others. But the first thing that she mentions is that God gives women the freedom to choose. I'm not really sure exactly where she's going with that, because God gives us the freedom to choose whatever we want to do. Uh, that doesn't mean that just because we have the freedom to choose whatever we want to do makes it okay to do that. Uh, I can choose to murder somebody, but that doesn't mean that murder is okay. So I'm not really sure where she's going with that argument, uh, except for the idea that God, if... And, and keep in mind, abortion isn't legal in many places in, in the world. So those women don't have the right to choose. So is she saying that God has only given the women of America the right to choose? I'm not really sure where she's going that, other than, uh, uh, as I said, the thought process as it pertains to God's word. There are several occasions where Solomon references the understanding of the way of man. In verse 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Solomon observes the fact that sometimes something can seem right to you. It can seem okay, it can seem, uh, it can make sense and seem wise, but that doesn't make that way right. 
just because it seems right to a person doesn't mean that it is right according to God. And so even though individuals may argue from the perspective that, well, God has given us a right to choose and, and it, it makes sense. And the article talked about preventing kids from ending up in a uh, abortion, prevents kids from ending up in adoption queues or lines and then being sent into uh, the system and getting messed up in the system and so forth. And of course, and, and again, we've talked we've talked before about the Bible and what the Bible says about abortion and so forth. I'm not going to rehash that, uh, but there's a lot of important aspects to what uh, I think. For instance, in Proverbs 21 and in verse two, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Uh, and I, I think there's a very important component to that when you link that especially with uh, Proverbs 14 uh, and verse 12 and the, the thought process of th there's a way that seems right to man, but that doesn't make it right. Well, man often thinks that his way is right, but God ultimately is the one who judges. God determines what's right. We don't. And uh, as Solomon goes on to say in verse 3, to do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And of course, that's a lesson that King Saul learned uh, the hard way. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 7, this is the specific passage that uh, Whoopi was referencing. Sometimes it's called the golden rule. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So, obviously, and this is one of those quick and easy sayings, it gets turned into a quick and easy saying, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But we have to remember the context in which this is being spoken. Now, the principle of treating others with respect, I mean, if we want to be treated with respect and with uh, kindness, we should treat others with respect and kindness. That is a biblical principle. I certainly don't disagree with that. However, the source of the golden rule coming from Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 is in a context that doesn't really apply to being kind and showing respect to people. In fact, ironically, whether she meant to or not, Whoopi kind of understood the context of Matthew 7 verse 12 because she links that to not judging others. And that is the context as it pertains to how the world views Matthew 7. Judge not that you be not judged. The world takes Matthew 7 and they believe that, well, this means that we're never to condemn or never to say anything's wrong. And yet, uh, what Jesus actually says, uh, notice verse 2, what judgment you, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And so what Jesus emphasizes is the need to beware of hypocritical judgment. Notice, how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and yet look, a plank is in your own eye. He says, hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Jesus doesn't condemn correcting others. He doesn't condemn observing or, or showing others what God's word says in that God says this is wrong or this is what right that that's not what Jesus is condemning he's condemning hypocritical judgment in that there's not a, ref, uh, a reflection being done within to make sure that I'm doing the best I can to do what God wants and now let me observe or let me try to help in this case your brother uh, in maybe a situation he doesn't realize that he's in or doing something that he doesn't realize is wrong. Uh, and so that's part of what Jesus is describing there. Then he goes on to describe the importance of seeking the word of God, certainly. Uh, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be open unto him. Uh, and then in verse 12, Therefore whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. 
the irony here is the very next verse, verse 13, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. There are few who find it. The irony here is that verse 13 and 14, they're connected to verse 12. And as a result, notice the exclusive nature of entering into the kingdom. Jesus says, enter by the narrow gate, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. There are few who find it. This is all still a component of, math, of the beginning of Matthew 7. There is a thought process in what Jesus is describing here. To make sure you're doing what's right, to make sure you are applying God's word properly, first apply it to yourself, then apply it to your brother, if your brother doesn't listen or someone doesn't listen, you can. if it's obvious they're not going to hear you, Jesus says, don't cast your pearls before swine. And then he continues to emphasize seeking the truth of God's word, seeking the kingdom, seeking to be pleasing to God. Uh, and so then, verse 11, if then being evil, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven Give good things to those who ask him. Again, seeking the kingdom, seeking spiritual wisdom, seeking to understand the truth, which then leads to verse 12. Therefore, taking into account what Jesus has already said, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Well, in what way is the quote-unquote golden rule the law and the prophets? Well, keep in mind that the second greatest commandment, according to Jesus, remember the first is to love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. The second is like unto it, to love your neighbor as yourself. That's the origin of the golden rule, to love your neighbor as yourself. But the purpose of Jesus utilizing that, the reason why Jesus appeals to that concept is to remember that not just to be good people or to be kind, but it goes back to seeking to help others to find the truth, making sure you're asking and seeking, and ultimately trying to teach others what God's word has to say. And so, obviously, as it pertains to, a broad, in a broad way, the uh, treatment we want to receive from others, we should first show them, loving our neighbor. Okay, and certainly, as a general rule, you would hope most people would, have, would follow that. If you show love to somebody, they in turn will show love to you. That's not always the case, but that's not really the purpose of why Jesus says that. It's ultimately about the spiritual goal of heaven. It's about obtaining the truth, following the truth, and being pleasing to God and entering into that narrow gate uh, and uh, finding that, or going through that difficult way that leads to life. And, and so it's interesting that you have individuals arguing from the perspective that, well, God gives us the ability to choose. Well, that doesn't make it okay. But then also using scripture to say, I can't really make that judgment for other people. And that's true. We can't make decisions for other people. But can we apply God's law to say something is right or something is wrong? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. In fact, Jesus expresses that in verse 5. We are to apply God's word first to ourselves, though, and then to apply it to my neighbor or to my brother to help them see what God's word has to say. This is not a a a blanket statement as Matthew 7 verse 1 is often applied to be you can't tell me what's right and wrong or you can't apply what's right and wrong you can only really apply it to yourself you can't apply it to other people and that's not what Jesus says all right that's the devo devotional for you today uh, our next devotional Lord willing will be tomorrow at 6 30 hope to see you all then thank you everybody